Good morning and welcome back to Margin. This morning we're going to talk about how to buy your car right. This is part two of a two-part series, so let's jump right into it. So the second component comes down to type. Now with a type of vehicle, you want to avoid those obscure vehicles. So for example, a Nissan Leaf or some kind of vehicle that may be not quite a crossover, not quite an SUV, not quite a car, not quite a hatch, not really sure what it is, but those types of vehicles that don't really fit a certain mold or certain type of vehicle can be a, a, an issue when it comes to you know, that vehicle reselling for top value. And so you may have certain vehicles that have popularity for a certain period of time and, uh, and may have popularity based on a commercial or may have popularity for some other reason. Uh, but the important part is not to buy a vehicle that is just a fad, not buying a vehicle like a Chrysler Crossfire that I purchased uh, a long time ago and and was a vehicle that was not quite a convertible wasn't quite a coupe didn't really have a trunk space or or space for someone to use as a commuter and had mercedes components but wasn't really a performance vehicle and so therefore it wasn't a great vehicle in the sector that it was in so the type of vehicle it was in so it ended up selling for well below book because the vehicle was so obscure. So ideally you would avoid obscure vehicles and uh, vehicles that don't fit a certain genre, don't fit into a SUV or a crossover or a large sedan or a truck um, you know, specific type. So as we talk through the best selling segments, these were a crossover, a pickup and an SUV in that specific order. So when we were looking at that specific order of the type of vehicle, that's what I'm referring to with a vehicle like a Chrysler Crossfire or a Nissan Kicks or whatever vehicle is more of like a fad vehicle. So with that, this doesn't mean that you should only buy one of those three vehicles that I mentioned because they are the best selling segments. What that means is that you don't want to buy something that's obscure. You want to be mindful of where the market is going and which cars you should purchase and which ones you should stay away from. You may also consider buying in a segment like truck as a general segment, but not consider making sure to get the right options. So, when you're looking at that, making sure to buy in the right segment, but then also coupling that with the right options will be key in making sure that you buy the right vehicle. So it's important to look at the right trim levels and figure out, okay, what is the mass market doing and how do I buy a vehicle that is, uh, that is, hitting all the bases for what people are typically looking for. So for example, if you are in the segment of truck, you may consider not buying an extended cab truck, but buying a crew cab truck, one that has four real doors, not buying a two wheel drive truck, even if you don't necessarily need the four wheel drive, but buying a four wheel drive truck that has a broader appeal. And then also looking at whether the truck has an automatic or manual transmission and buying the truck with an automatic transmission even if you don't want necessarily to drive a automatic transmission but knowing that especially anymore there's a lot fewer trucks available in a manual transmission but also there's a lot fewer people who can drive a manual transmission and then the, the last component I would even bring up has to do again with that trim level, not buying that bare, you know, uh, minimum trim level, nor buying the luxury trim level, but buying something that's in, in the middle somewhere. You know, if we were looking at that F-150 that we were looking at as an example, you wouldn't buy an XL, you wouldn't buy necessarily a, a, uh, a platinum one, 
but you may consider buying an XLT or uh, or buying a Lariat version. So the third component comes down to options. Now options are especially important when it comes to resale and making sure that you have the right options. Now, just having as many options as possible does not necessarily equate to a higher resale value. So you have to consider what options are actually adding value and which ones are not. So when you're looking at buying a vehicle, you may have a certain color in mind that can work well for your lifestyle and the way that you want to present yourself and so on and so forth, but may not work well for the masses. So therefore may be a difficult color to then sell in the future. Now, one of these colors you may think would fall in that category is a bright yellow, but for whatever reason, a bright yellow does actually have a very good resale value. It's usually in the top, you know, two or three at, of resale values based on color. And so when you're looking at a vehicle, don't just immediately write it off, but do a little bit of research to figure out whether that vehicle has a, uh, a, a positive impact or a negative impact based on a color. And you can do that through a car guru search and looking at that color and what they are listed for based on, um, you know, based on the year making model, according to the same year making model in a different color. So we've discussed before that engine modifications, wraps, uh, any kind of body kits, things like that have a specific demographic and therefore oftentimes people can put a ton of money into these things and they can not necessarily return that value because it's so specific to an individual, to an individual's likes and dislikes accordingly. And so that modification may not actually add value. And in fact, may even negatively affect your value and the resale value for your vehicle. So beyond that, an example of this would be the uh, the snorkel on the TRD Pro Tacoma. Now Tacoma sell typically very, very well, but in the last few years, they've had an option that they've since discontinued that was a snorkel. So a snorkel gives you the ability for uh, your vehicle to uh, be submerged to a certain level uh, in order for the vehicle to continue to breathe and therefore for the vehicle not to flood. And so with that, when you are looking at an off-road vehicle like a TRD Pro, many people want the functionality of a TRD Pro for its off-road capability, uh, but based on having a snorkel out of the, out of the side of your uh, you know, quarter panel and going up the side of your, uh, your, uh, your passenger side uh, window, it may not be appealing for the mass market. And so that's an example of something Toyota did in particular that that I don't believe necessarily fit the um, the broad stroke in regards to uh, what most buyers would be looking for. So, for example, my uncle purchased a new vehicle a few years back and he looked at Cadillacs, which was typically his go to. He looked at GMCs and he looked at actually Buicks. And he found a Buick Enclave that was at a dealership that had sat there as a brand new vehicle for over a year. And uh, for whatever reason, there was no takers. There's no buyer for that vehicle. Now it was finished in a pearl white uh, exterior paint and had a saddle colored leather interior. Now he lives up, uh, or at least at the time, lived up in the Northeast portion of the United States. Now, up in the Northeast portion of the United States, uh, it it seemed as though that European uh, influence uh, for having that saddle interior uh, was not uh, was not well accepted, and so therefore, something that would sell really well here in the Southwest um, is something based on a region that did not sell well up there. So he got a great deal on it, but it's important for you to understand the region, uh, the regional aspects of what sells in your region, what doesn't. And, and understanding over time, you know, what vehicles are, are, are heavily impacted negatively 
in your area based on the region that you're in. So let's start with these three components in buying a vehicle right. Now again, looking at the history, looking at the type of vehicle, and then looking at the options. Those three components gives you something to start with to look at how to buy your vehicle right, to make sure that you buy the vehicle that has the right history on it, that has the you know clean history on it, has a clean title, uh, and, uh, and also that vehicle that's in the right type based on the trends, based on uh, what is selling well, and then also what options are typical, uh, you know, mid-band options that people typically would want on those vehicles. And being mindful of those three aspects to ensure that you're not buying a vehicle that is a niche vehicle uh, that does not necessarily uh, allow for you to, to resell it and get top dollar for it. So my call to action today comes down to looking at your current vehicle, figuring out whether that vehicle is something that hits those three components and, and how you can adjust this going forward if you are in the market of buying your next vehicle. If this information is helpful to you, please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're reminded to come back on a daily basis and improve in managing your personal finances. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your day, and we'll see you back tomorrow.